Every year in the United States, about 60,000 women are told they have a breast condition called ductal carcinoma in situ or DCIS. That's about one in five breast cancer diagnoses. And here's the twist. Many of those women are told they have cancer, but most will never die from it. In fact, the cure rate for DCIS is close to 100% when treated. So why does something so treatable still cause so much fear? I remember a patient I'll call Rose. She was 52, came in after a routine mammogram and was told she had DCIS. Her first words to me were, doctor, am I going to die? That's the power of the word cancer. It carries fear, even when the truth is far more reassuring. What Rose didn't know, and many don't, is that DCIS is not the same as invasive breast cancer. It's often called stage zero breast cancer because it hasn't broken out of the ducts where it began. So let's break it down. Think of your breast as a house with many small rooms. Inside are ducts like passageways that carry milk during breastfeeding. Sometimes abnormal cells grow inside those ducts. If they stay there, confined, not breaking through the duct wall, we call it ductal carcinoma in situ or DCIS. In situ is Latin for in its place. The cancer is trapped. It hasn't invaded surrounding tissue. It hasn't spread. It's like smoke inside a fireplace, contained, visible, but not yet burning down the house. That's why DCIS is considered non-invasive. Now you might ask, if DCIS isn't invasive, why treat it at all? Here's the answer. While many cases of DCIS will never turn into invasive cancer, some will. And we can't always predict which ones will stay quiet and which ones will break out. That's why DCIS matters. It is a warning sign, a potential early stage of breast cancer, invasive cancer, and it's one of the main reasons mammograms save lives, because DCIS is usually found before a lump can even be felt. About 20% of all breast cancer diagnoses in the US are DCIS. That's roughly one in five. It's much more common today than decades ago, not because it's happening more, but because screening is better. Mammograms can pick up these tiny clusters of abnormal cells before they cause any symptoms. This is one of those rare times in medicine where finding something early means we have a chance to act before it becomes dangerous. Here's the tricky part. Most women with DCIS have no symptoms at all. No lump, no pain, nothing. That's why it's usually found during a mammogram. Sometimes the mammogram shows tiny white specks called calcifications, little flecks of calcium that may suggest abnormal cells are present. This is another reason that screening is so important. Without mammograms, many women would never know until DCIS became invasive. Now let's talk about treatment. The good news is that DCIS is almost always curable. The challenge is deciding how much treatment is necessary. The main options are lumpectomy, which is surgery to remove just the area of DCIS, usually followed by radiation to lower the risk of coming back. Number two is mastectomy, surgery to remove the entire breast. This is recommended if the DCIS is very large or found in multiple areas of the breast. Third would be hormone blocking medicine like tamoxifen if the DCIS is fueled by estrogen. Some women also consider doing less treatment, even just monitoring closely, especially if the DCIS is very small and low grade. There is a big debate in medicine right now. Are we over treating DCIS? Some experts argue yes. Others say caution is better because once DCIS becomes invasive, it's no longer stage zero, it's stage one or beyond. What's most important is this. Treatment is highly individualized. It depends on the size, grade, hormone status, and the woman's own preferences. Here's something I've learned. Sometimes the hardest part of DCIS is not the treatment is the anxiety. Being told you have carcinoma, even the doctors reassure you it's early, creates stress, a sleepless, sleepless fear of the future. One of my patients said, it feels like a ticking time bomb in my body. Another said, I feel guilty because everyone tells me I should be relieved. It's only DCIS, but I'm still terrified. 
This is where we as doctors and as a society need to do better. We need to explain clearly. DCIS is not life-threatening when treated. Most women with DCIS live long, healthy lives. The survival rates uh, tell the story. The 10-year survival for DCIS is close to 100%. Most women with DCIS never develop invasive breast cancer. Even when DCIS comes back after treatment, it is often still non-invasive. These numbers are extraordinary. Few conditions in oncology have this kind of outlook, but statistics alone don't calm fear. Stories do. I think of Sarah, a woman in her 60s, who found out she had DCIS on a mammogram. She chose a lumpectomy and radiation. She's now 12 years cancer-free. She told me I, it was scary at first, but once I understood that DCIS wasn't a death sentence, I could breathe again. Or Nadia, who had a strong family history of breast cancer and chose a double mastectomy after her DCIS diagnosis. She said, I wanted to take control. For me, this was peace of mind. Different choices, same result. Life, hope, and future. Now, I want to address something important, the debate around over-treatment. Because DCIS is curable, some ask, are we doing too much? Are women undergoing major surgery and radiation for something that may never have harmed them? It is a fair question. Clinical trials are ongoing to see if some women with low-grade DCIS can be safely monitored instead of treated aggressively. But until we can clearly tell which cases will stay harmless and which will progress, the standard of care remains treatment, at least in the US. And with that treatment, the outcomes are excellent. Just like with invasive breast cancer, support is vital. The American Cancer Society has resources for women with DCIS. Counseling, peer support, rights to treatment if needed. There is another kind of support that matters here, education. When women understand what DCIS is and what it isn't, they feel less afraid. Knowledge replaces fear with clarity. The future of DCIS uh, care lies in personalization. We want to be able to say, the woman's DCIS is low risk, she can be safely monitored, or this one has high risk, she should be treated right away. That means better genetic testing, better biomarkers, better tools to separate harmless DCIS from dangerous ones. We are not quite there yet, but we're getting closer. So here is the takeaway. If you're called back after a mammogram, don't panic. Most callbacks are not cancer. And if it turns out to be DCIS, remember, this is the earliest, most curable form of breast cancer. If you're due for a mammogram, don't delay. Put it on your calendar. Do it for yourself, your family, your future. Because catching DCIS is catching breast cancer at its very beginning, before it can invade, before it can spread, before it can take lives. DCIS may sound frightening, but in truth, it's often a gift, a warning caught early, a chance to act before harm is done. It's not the end of the story. For most, it is the beginning of peace of mind, the beginning of prevention, and the beginning of a future free of invasive cancer. Thank you for listening.